ADHD is a neurodevelopmental condition, which means it's a difference in the way the brain has developed and functions. It is common in some families, and it's more common in some than in others, so we know that there's something to do with genetics that's going on, and research suggests it's about 75% inherited. That doesn't mean that if you have five children, they will all have ADHD. But if you know that ADHD is in your family, you may have more than one child with symptoms, some of them perhaps with not enough to get a diagnosis, but certainly with the difficulties associated. What we know from the gene research is it's not one gene that causes ADHD. So ADHD is also associated with other conditions, and I'll show you some more about that in a while. It's associated with autism, dyslexia and anxiety. And it is a disability. It can be a bit strange to think of it being a disability when the child seems to be in many ways just like everybody else. It's a disability that means that the child may need support to assist them in achieving the outcomes across their lifetime that we would expect for everybody else. And that's what disability support is about, to help people have an equal chance. There are a number of myths about ADHD, and you may see some of these in the media or hear them at the playground gate. So often people think that children with ADHD are naughty. Now that's because they don't understand what ADHD is and how it happens, but also because they're just making a general comment about children's behaviour. And often parents can feel that other people think they have caused the ADHD symptoms in their child. What you'll learn in this course is actually it is a bit different from that. And although poor parenting could make ADHD symptoms worse, even the best parenting won't get rid of all of the symptoms. So ADHD sometimes is thought to go away as the child grows up. And certainly the hyperactivity angle on it may change, but that could be replaced by a sort of internal restlessness, and we'll come back to that later. So you need to remember that ADHD is a lifelong diagnosis, and it's just about how it shows at different periods of life. Sometimes the support of a structured classroom environment can mean that the symptoms are less obvious in school, and the child should be actively engaged all day long doing their work and getting on with their school tasks. So they're very busy and often children with ADHD are quite good at keeping busy and being busy. And you see the problems more at times when they're less busy and there's less structure. So playtimes may be more difficult, but the classroom might be okay with a very clear system in the class for behaviour and for encouraging good work from children. People might think that ADHD isn't seen in young children. But what we know from research is there will be signs of ADHD symptoms developing as the child grows up. They will be less obvious when the child is little. And what you might see is a version of the terrible twos continuing much longer than expected. And the child finding some difficulties playing or engaging in activities which mean they have to stay in one place. So when they're little, they may just be seen as a very active child. And it's not until they go to school that people realise that that activity level is a problem for the classroom. Sometimes people might feel that children with ADHD are not clever and will always have learning difficulties. They don't. There are many children with ADHD who don't have any other problem. They only have ADHD. However, their ADHD symptoms will affect the way they engage with school and the work that they get done in the classroom. So they may achieve less because of their ADHD, but not because they're inherently any less clever than everybody else. Some of the media reports can be a bit scary because they will talk about the prison population and say that there are lots of people there who have ADHD. Now that may be true, a lot of those people won't have been diagnosed with ADHD, which means they have lived their life without the right kind of support, or they'll have had an upbringing which has been fraught with difficulties, and that's the route to prison rather than the ADHD. People can sometimes think that medication is the only treatment, and often that's the only thing that's discussed in the media. How many children are taking a medication, say, Ritalin? 
Uh, in actual fact, only the minority will be needing to take a medication and they may not be on medication for their whole lifetime. Teachers at the moment are not trained specifically in ADHD and all the strategies they would need to manage a child. So when you're talking with your school, it'd be worth asking your teachers what training they've actually had on ADHD. Their, their basic teacher training is so busy that it won't have included much about ADHD at all if it has included it. Sometimes people feel that a special school is going to be the only environment that can support a child with ADHD. That isn't the case and the vast majority of children with ADHD go into mainstream school. They're educated in ordinary classrooms alongside everybody else. And that is much better for them if they can manage that. Sometimes you might see reports about the unemployed and see that there are more people with ADHD included in those reports. And it can look as if having ADHD leads into unemployment. What it does do is cause some difficulties for work for some people. So it depends on the job that the person chooses. So if they can find a role that means they can be very active and that's OK, they're likely to do a whole lot better. If they don't have academic skills, which means that they can get around some of the issues or they can learn about strategies themselves, they may have more difficulty at work. And I would think that actually, rather than being unemployed, people with ADHD may be underemployed for their ability. So they'll take a job which suits their need for activity when actually they're very capable intellectually of doing something more. And that links to the next point, which is about university, that people with ADHD are expected to go to university just like any other student. And they can have support to make sure that works OK for them. Without the support, they may run into difficulties with the organising of work and getting essays in in time and then going through all the career paths that are options after that. So the support is provided to put them on an equal footing with other students. The diagnosis of ADHD has three main problem areas. So the first one is being restless and parents often describe that as being constantly on the go. Not paying attention very well or inattention. And then impulsivity, which means acting before you've thought something out and decided whether it's sensible. Restlessness can often be more obvious in boys than in girls. And you have to remember that it can be an internal sense of restlessness. No, so not being able to stay thinking about a topic, occupied with it, as well as physically being on the go. So the physical side of things, you might see fidgeting or getting out of your seat at times when it would be a good idea to stay there, such as at the cinema or watching TV at home or in the classroom. Fiddling with objects, which often is used by people with ADHD to help them to pay attention. Can be talking too much, so either too quickly or just having too much to say. They may have difficulty staying still and quiet at times when they've really got to do that. For instance, waiting for a theatre performance to start, they might find it hard to keep quiet. Or being at a funeral or in a wedding at the time when there's a bit of thoughtfulness going on rather than somebody talking. So they might find it hard to keep quiet at those moments and not to recognise that everybody around them is making a big effort to keep quiet and they need to follow suit. That could also apply to standing in queues. So most of the time people in queues tend to be pretty quiet. If you've got a problem standing there, then you're more likely to need to do something and it may be talking constantly is your option. Some young people with ADHD might be eating all the time as a way of keeping themselves occupied and their hands occupied. And that can be, for instance, when they're playing on the PlayStation. So they need to do two things. And in order to keep their concentration on the PlayStation, they find they need to eat at the same time. Obviously, that can lead to children and young people becoming overweight. Uh, and in the past, people used to think that children with ADHD were always going to be slim. But as children have played inside more and more and more and are sitting down to play, they're getting less exercise. So maybe the weight's piling on. 
So inattention means not paying attention well. It doesn't necessarily mean not paying attention at all. So you may have a child who is really not listening to you, or you may have a child who is looking like they're not listening to you because they're not looking at you, they're doing something else at the same time, they're not focusing on your face. It doesn't mean they can't hear what you're saying, but they're not, if you like, playing the game of listening. Um, so they may not be hearing what's going on because they're so busy trying hard to listen. They might have difficulty keeping their attention on a task until that task is finished, even though it can be something they find quite interesting. So they're, they're likely to lose concentration or have to make more effort to maintain it, which is tiring. They can make careless mistakes with things. Uh, so that might be things like schoolwork or even when you ask children to go and get something for you, they only remember part of what you've said. So things that seem obvious may be forgotten. They might not remember things which seem to be quite obvious to you, but not to them. So in order for them to remember it, they've got to keep it in their head, hold it there, keep on replaying it whilst they're, say, walking upstairs to go and get the things you've asked them to fetch. So they're very prone to forgetting parts of instructions or parts of equipment. So it's very much worth learning to have a routine to pack bags or prepare for activities. Children who don't attend well might not complete tasks at all, so they may get so distracted that they can't actually get themselves focused back into the task because they can't work out where they were. So instead of continuing, they might start all over again. If you keep on starting all over again, you never get to the end. Typically, they're easily distracted, and that can be from noises, people around them, things going on, something happening outside the window. But it can also be from thoughts in their head. So if something happens during the day that is an important event and they need to think about and process, that might be very distracting during the day, and they may not be able to attend to the tasks they need to. That can be a particular issue in school. So there could have been an unusual event in school, like a fire alarm going off in the morning, and still in the afternoon, the child is unsettled by what's happened in the morning because they found it hard to think about what that might mean for them, uh, what they should do next time, how to follow the instructions for a fire event, whether they did it right, whether they didn't do it right. So it can look like they have completely lost it because of something that happened in the morning that's still going on in their head in the afternoon. Children with ADHD are quite prone to losing their equipment, their coats, their shoes, maybe one shoe as well, not necessarily both. So things that other people would make a point of keeping safe and organised, they may not go through that step. And then that means those things are very easily mislaid. And if they hadn't had a list in the first place for what to compare their belongings with, so they know what should be in their bag, then it's very likely they won't be able to remember the list. And they will just stuff all the things back in and think they've got everything. I think that's one of the most common complaints from parents is the number of school jumpers they've had to buy or shirts or even underwear. You know, you would think it's quite hard to lose your underwear, but kids manage to do it. So they might go swimming and... They don't know where they've put the pants and it's time to go. So they quickly put the trousers on and go. Uh, and you would wonder how they managed not to know where their pants were, but it can happen. Impulsivity means acting before you've thought about something. So you see this in things like difficulty waiting for a turn. Now that can be a turn in a queue. So if you're at Alton Towers and it's taking you ages to get to the front, how you manage yourself during that time. It can be waiting for a turn in a game. So often children with ADHD are much better at games with quick turns, like Snap or Jenga, than they are with things like Monopoly, because it's waiting too long and makes them feel agitated and frustrated. They might have difficulty with keeping quiet during conversations when they should, and may talk over people and interrupt their conversation. Often they will say, I need to tell you that because I forget otherwise, um, so it may be connected, but not obviously related to what's being said. And sometimes people can feel that this is an indication of autism. 
Those things aren't necessarily autistic things, but they are seen also in children with autism. So sometimes it can be quite hard when you're looking at the social interaction of children with ADHD and the way they're relating to people may have some similarities. They may have a lot of difficulty with controlling themselves in terms of safety. So being able to ride a bike or a scooter safely, being able to cross the road, holding your parents' hand when they're little, staying close by in a shopping centre. All of those kind of things would be counted under dangerous behaviour. And as they get older, they may make some risky choices. They may run into the road thinking they're going to be able to cross and get knocked down. They might uh, ride their bike across a bumpy piece of ground, not thinking for a minute that they're going to fall off. So they're, they're not so good at evaluating risk, and that applies to people as well. And they may not be good at working out which people are going to be good friends and make sure that those people are not going to lead them astray. So often the other children who are attracted to children with ADHD are those who like a good laugh and it may be that the child with ADHD is the fall guy and always the one who's selected to play the prank or do the thing. And because they're not so socially skilled, perhaps they are more likely to get caught. There are other difficulties that are associated with ADHD. These are the things that are commonly seen. So being able to control your emotions does require your thinking skills to be working really well. And often in ADHD, that's a big effort to keep it going well. So they might get irritated and annoyed, but also silly and excitable. Um, so it's just that emotional control that can be a big issue. Often they've got problems with coordination. So they might not be able to tie their laces, uh, put their clothes on really easily and quickly. Ordinary everyday skills. When, when these things apply to things like riding a bike, obviously it increases the risk of an accident as well. So if you're not very well coordinated but you need to put your brakes on really fast, that can be quite hard. Autism is associated with ADHD, so children with autism are more likely to also have ADHD symptoms and vice versa. But sometimes it may be related and not enough to make a separate diagnosis. So children with ADHD may have some social communication difficulties, but not of the nature seen in autism. Sometimes they may have autism as well. Sleep's a common issue. So often parents talk about children who have real difficulty settling and relaxing into sleep and also tend to get up very early in the morning. So they don't seem to need as much sleep as other people. And unfortunately, the rest of the family might need that time. So they can be disruptive to family life in the night. And the key there is to teach your child how to occupy themselves very quietly with things that won't make them stay more awake. So keeping off computer screens, TVs, um, but having something to do if you wake in the night. There's a suitable thing. So that could be looking at books, playing very, very quietly in your bed so that other people don't know, doing drawing. It's a hard one because if parents don't get enough sleep, it increases their stress. Low self-esteem can be a consequence of all these difficulties that we've talked about. So when you get in trouble a lot or people correct your behaviour a lot, it can lead to you feeling you must be a bad kind of person. And improving your child's self-esteem is the one big thing that a parent could try to do with a child with ADHD. There are behaviour problems with ADHD and that's how children come to be diagnosed. They're not usually seen if all they have is the attention problems side. So once their behaviour is causing a worry for other people, they'll be referred. And their behaviour problems can be varied, but often include not doing as they're told, being disruptive in lessons, repeatedly having to be told the same things and then people start to think they're deliberately not doing what they should do rather than they find it very difficult to do what they should do. Learning difficulties are associated with ADHD and ADHD is more common in children with learning difficulties and some learning difficulties are more often associated such as dyslexia. There are some things that can make symptoms of ADHD worse. And generally, that's anything that increases stress. 
So for different children, it may be different things, but these are some common ones. The first one is being cooped up indoors all day. For children with ADHD, they're often much better if they can have a regular time outside, they can run around, burn off some energy, and feel more settled then when they come in. They're probably going to have difficulty doing many tasks at a time, so it's much better to give instructions one at a time. Otherwise, things will be missed or forgotten. Sudden deadlines are a definite stress increaser for all of us. So people suddenly saying, we need you to do this now. Often young people with ADHD take a while to process the information and to work out what that really means for them. So if you say to them, right, we're going out and we're going in 10 minutes, that's better if you can give them some plan for how to manage to get ready for going out in 10 minutes. If you just say, right, we're off in 10 minutes, get ready and let's go, they're likely to feel panicked by that and they may say, I can't or I won't because they're busy doing something else and they're not sure how they're going to end that and start the next thing. Often a stress increaser is being criticised or other people being irritated by the kind of things that the child with ADHD is doing. Some of these things are really difficult for them to have control over and telling them off for it or getting annoyed and expecting that to mean that they will do better doesn't really work. Boredom can be another issue. So not having anything to do will probably increase the sort of fidgetiness and agitation side of ADHD and you may need to provide something for much longer time than you would for most children. So if you're attending appointments, you bring stuff with you for the child to do in the waiting room. If you're going on a train journey, you make sure they're occupied during the journey. If you're going in the car on a trip, you make sure that you've got a number of things that they can do so that they don't get bored and therefore they don't get stressed. Giving too many instructions at a time can be a problem and the working memory problem of ADHD, that is being able to remember what you've been asked or told, hold it in your head, work with it at the same time as getting on with something else or walking or something might be very simple to do. That can be an absolute stressor. So it's very important that you keep your instructions short and sweet and you don't give too many at a time. Another thing that's known to make things much more stressful is very harsh discipline. It's unlikely to lead to the child being able to control themselves better because it will increase stress. So the effect of harsh discipline is likely to be worse rather than better, even though the parent may intend or the teacher may intend that by having a good telling off, they will learn to avoid that situation in the future. It may have the opposite effect that increases stress and therefore their symptoms of ADHD become more difficult to control. There are some ongoing issues that may affect somebody with ADHD right across their lifetime. So there's some very practical things such as being able to get things done on time, like paying bills or applying for a job or filling out all the forms that we do as adults or making appointments to see their GP. All of those require you to keep attention, focus it and complete a task. And all of those you know now are a difficulty that you'd see in ADHD. Another one is emotional problems. So people with ADHD, because they get stressed, can feel very anxious or have a low mood or depression. Dealing with ADHD for some people can be an extreme difficulty and take a whole lot of energy. And then when other things come along which make them more anxious or miserable, it can have a devastating effect. Another issue over a lifetime is the ability to manage stress. So being able to deal with everyday stresses such as making arrangements to go on holiday, dealing with children, picking up children from school who are ill, which requires an adjustment in your timetable. All of those sorts of things can be very stressful for somebody with ADHD. They may find it more difficult to hold down a training placement or a job or a course because in order to do that they've got to be able to keep up with the work and get everything done at the right times and do them the correct kind of way. 
Now, where people are supported with their ADHD symptoms, that can become a whole lot easier for them. So it's important that they understand that if they're applying for jobs, they need to think about what support may be available if they need it. Social relationships and friendships can be an issue. Uh, some people with ADHD find it quite hard not to say things that come into their head. So they may offend people without necessarily intending to and therefore find it more difficult to keep friends, keep hold of boyfriends, girlfriends, uh, being able to be in a group of friends without either being too loud or behaving inappropriately in a way that is different from your average situation. So they can find it harder to keep going with relationships. However, often people find that energy and vigour that they have very attractive and they may also attract relationships from people who are looking for somebody like that and find them very entertaining and may encourage them to perhaps act in a way that it might be a bit wiser not to. Adults with ADHD certainly have a higher rate of ordinary accidents. So if you looked at uh, bike riders or people driving cars, they're more likely to have small incidents perhaps, but regularly or more frequently than your average person. And that's because of the impulsivity and also the attention requirements and the ability to think of lots of things at the same time. They might also have some difficulties with organising themselves for activities and end up not going to things that they actually would enjoy just because they can't get themselves organised to do it. They might have some difficulties with money and being able to plan and save and not think only of the moment and what they'd like to do with the money this weekend when they've just been paid. They might also find it harder to find the right job for them so that it gives them enough time and space to be themselves but also enables them to perform well. For some people, they are more vulnerable to getting into trouble. So if they get in with a crowd where they become the person who will always do the daring thing because they didn't see the trouble coming, they could get into trouble accidentally without intending to end up in trouble with the police or anything like that because they didn't realise what the possible consequences might have been or be able to think through how you might be caught if you do something wrong. Same applies for looking after their health and well-being. So they are not so good at making appointments to see the doctors and keeping them and then getting to treatment appointments. So in terms of health outcomes, people with ADHD do show worse outcomes. They're not so good at getting just regular checks. So if they also have some additional health problems, that's an added problem. And the systems in this country work that you have to sit and wait for your appointment and you have to wait quietly. There isn't anything to do quite often except maybe a paper to read. That's quite a difficult situation for somebody with ADHD to wait in and maybe to wait for an indefinite amount of time. Uh, and because of that, they may feel irritated. And then if somebody speaks to them the wrong kind of way or isn't very helpful about it, they may come across as very rude. Now you've got a good understanding of what ADHD is and what it isn't. We're going to move on to thinking about what you might do to support your child.